Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Shane with Hoosier Hardware and today I want to talk a little bit about the Ryzen 5 processors again. In my last video I talked about each one of these four Ryzen 5 processors and sort of what use cases they match up well with. Today I want to talk more specifically about the two 6 core and 12 thread parts, the 1600 and the 1600X. Specifically, I want to sort of outline why you probably shouldn't be looking at the 1600X at all if you're looking at one of the 6 core parts, you should really be sticking with just the 1600. To start off, we need to look at the Ryzen 5 coolers. The 1400 gets the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which is sort of like the little brother of the Wraith Spire Cooler, which will come with the 1600 and the 1500X. Now you'll note the 1600X does not have a cooler at all. For your cooling of the 1600X, you will have to provide your own cooler. Now there are many great coolers on the market, but one of the fan favorites that people seem to go back to Year after year is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, and this is a really solid cooler for $30. It presents a great value to the customer. So if we go back to the Ryzen 5 lineup list, you'll notice that the 1600X is already $30 more than the Ryzen 5 1600. If we factor in the $30 that you're going to pay for a cooler, or at least a decent one if you don't already have a cooler, that price point at the 1600X rises at $279, presenting a $60 price premium for the 1600X over the 1600. Now the folks over at Hard OCP TV were able to get their hands on four Ryzen 5 samples, two 1600s and two 1400s. And by the way, I'll link a card to their video above, as well as giving you the links to both their channel and their video in the description below if you want to check those out. Now if you look at the right half of this chart, you'll notice that their two 1600 samples were virtually identical, both of them reaching 4.0 GHz at 1.45 volts. Now this is important when you put it in the context of the Ryzen 7 parts that are already on the market. Ryzen 1800X parts typically reach 4.0 GHz but rarely get to 4.1 GHz, and the same can be said of the 1700X. The Ryzen 7 1700 by contrast comes in at a full $170 cheaper than the 1800X, but has often been shown to be able to hit 3.9 GHz even with the stock cooler. Again, it's important to note that the 1600X does not come with a stock cooler, so again you'll be investing more money unless you actually have your own from the get-go. So looking at our price points, you would be paying $219 for a Ryzen 5 1600 that looks like you have a pretty good chance of hitting 4.0 GHz, or at least 3.9 GHz at worst case scenario. Compare that to paying $249 for a Ryzen 5 1600X that will probably not overclock beyond 4.0 GHz anyways, unless you're very lucky, in which case you may actually get a part that overclocks to 4.1 GHz. Even so, the biggest difference between these two parts is likely to be about 200 MHz from the best 1600X to some of the worst 1600s. Now, $30 may be worth that price premium, but if you're somebody that also has to buy a cooler for your 1600X, the $60 price premium that you will effectively be paying is just not worth it. Keep in mind that 1600 still comes with that Spire cooler, which likely will get you close to a maximum overclock with it anyways. In fact, I would be very surprised if you don't hit 3.9 GHz with the stock cooler out of the box based on what I've seen from the Ryzen 7 1700s. So what's this all mean for you, the consumer? Basically, it comes down to the same advice I am giving about the Ryzen 7 line of processors. Just skip the top tiers of those. Pass on the 1700X and pass on the 1800X because the Ryzen 7 1700 gives you about the same performance for a lot less money. The same advice holds true with the Ryzen 5 1600 and 1600Xs. The Ryzen 5 1600 coming with its own cooler gives you a much better price to performance ratio than will the 1600X, especially once you start factoring in the added cost of a cooler if you're somebody that has to add that to the mix. Now don't mistake this for me saying that the Ryzen 1600X is a bad processor. In fact, I think it's a great processor. The problem is that AMD, with their performance of their tiers being so close together, it just doesn't make so much sense to buy the 1600X. It makes a lot more sense if you're buying a 6 core 12 thread part to just go with the 1600 and overclock it with a B350 or an X370 motherboard. 
So hopefully you found this video informative. Guys, if you did, give me a like down below. Share, subscribe. All those things are super helpful. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tags to make it easy for you. And now, of course, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.